Hi and welcome to another video of Dr. Mahmoud Alode. And in this video, we'll be focusing on the service industry. For the service industry, uh, we need to look into uh, how to create a service process and how we could improve it over the, uh, the course of uh, TEDT 4879. Uh, in particular, for this video, I'll be talking about types of service processes. When you initiate a, a business or a service, uh, what you need to do, you need to think about what type of a process that you need to implement. And based on that, you could decide and make, make several decisions based on the type of the process. All right, so there could be different ways for uh, classifying the service system, but there are mainly two things that we could use or two criteria that we could use it to classify the service process. The first one is the type of a process, what type of the process, how the process look like, and the other one, the degree of contact, how often the customer contact you or how often you will need to be contact, uh, in contact with the customer. Starting with the first type, which is type of the process. And for the type of the process, there are three types of processes uh, uh, for in a, in a service industry. And the first one is the line operations. The second one is the job shop operations. And the third one, intermittent operations. All right, let's go ahead and start with the first type, which is the line operations. The first one, the line operation, let's read about it and to, to understand how this process will look like when you have a line operation. The line operation progress in a liner fashion. So you will see something uh, similar to uh, just a line, a process of a line. The client passes through a sequence experience being at point A, when they first enter the store or contact the business. So um, the customer will go into in sequence, process one, process two, process three. So the customer will go through this process uh, and service delivery passes through number of processes before finalizing the transaction. So again, the customer has to th go through these processes before finalizing the transaction. This is an arranged, sequence of operations or activities. This is should be arranged in a, a sequence that uh, will help uh, serve the customer. The service is produced by uh, following this sequence. So in the manufacturing, if you look into just to make it close to the manufacturing and a simply line uh, for an, a domestic uh, appliances, uh, it is looks like this type of the process. So look into the assembly line. They go from uh, one to another process. Then they have to follow the sequence. However, in the serve in the service industry, self service restaurant would be an example for this process. Although this is perhaps the simplest, it is the simplest uh, of the process types. To understand it is it has a several uh, drawbacks so uh, let's talk about the drawbacks in in uh, in and that could be uh, affect the whole business if one element this is the drawback this is the disadvantage of the line operations if there's one element in the sequence uh, in the whole flow has a bottleneck or delay the client will judge the whole service space on that weak area so if one of the processes in one of the stations took them longer than expected, that would be judge the whole system. For example, if you were talking about the self-service cafeteria where the customer bring their trays and go to station one and they put some food and then go to station two, they put their food, station three, they put the food, of course, there's some factors related to each station, such as availability of utensils, availability of tools, uh, cleanness of the station, uh, uh, how many customers on that line, 
So this could affect, uh, uh, and also there's, uh, for this example, the back draws uh, or the drawbacks for this uh, process is the, uh, if you see once they go into the self-service uh, cafeteria, everything work perfect in a smooth flow. However, if there is a slow check out uh, operator and that's gonna make it uh, very difficult for customers to, uh, to give you an excellent review. So that would, the, the food is good, the stations are clean, everything is available. There's a variety of food, there are a variety of stations, um, but the, the checkout process is long, uh, it takes long time. And that's will judge the whole system by just only that one week uh, area. It is also not a service process that allows much uh, flexibility. So there's not much of flexibility. We have a lot of standardization, follow the standard one, two, three, four, and that's it. There's not much of flexibility. You can't break these standards and you have to come up with, you can't do that. Uh, that does not does make controlling it easier. Yeah, it's just, the nice thing about standardization is easy to control. You establish the standard and you follow it but it would only suit a standard offering that implement repetitive processes with little or no variation. So, uh, well, that, the, again, standardization is good. It's simple. You could follow it. There's no variation, uh, but there's no flexibility. And, and sometimes, especially when you're dealing with a human being, you need to have some uh, customization. You need to have some flexibility in your process. This type of service process is the easiest to automate. So this is good if you want to automate it and, and bring automation, that could be uh, a good a good solution because it is uh, so standardized and it's easy to accomplish. Every customer has a similar customer experience and the service process does not vary. This uh, process, this process is most suitable in service organizations with high volume. So if you have a high volume, that would work uh, a fairly continuous demand for the relatively uh, standard kinds of services. So this is about the line. So what we've learned so far, we've learned it is a, a liner fashion. It is the customer has to go in sequence into each process. Uh, it is nice because it bring you, uh, you could implement standardization uh, it's not much flexible. The only one disadvantage for it, the drawback for it is uh, if there's one weak point in the system, in the process, the customer will judge the whole system based on that weak point. Now, moving into the second uh, type, which is the job shop, job shop operation. The job, a job shop operation produces a variety of services using different combination and sequences of activities. The services can be tolerated to meet uh, varying customer needs and to provide a bespoke service. An example, this is where I want you to uh, know about this uh, job shop. It's similar to professional services such as a law firm or consulting. These are an example of the job. So where you customize the service based on you customize the service based on the case based on the customer so you tolerate your service to meet the different customer needs while flexibility is a key advantage of this type of system it may suffer from being more difficult to schedule uh, and difficult to calculate the capacity of the system. So one thing about this, this is something uh, I, I call it, it's a good problem. Uh, if you are busy and you have more customers, then it's, you might be not able to serve them. Uh, and so there's no way to, uh, to schedule. It's, it's kind of difficult to schedule. There could be a uh, customer come in and out and, and you might receive a, a phone call from a customer who needs a consultation. So this type of service, uh, it's hard to schedule. It's maybe the demand will exceed the capacity of the system. You are not able to work with uh, more than five customers a month and that will just extremely keep you busy. But again, this is, I call it a good uh, problem 
because that will give you an opportunity to expand your business and bring some people to assist you on the business. And um, there could be different way it would be just, you know, uh, part-time or outsourcing or a friend who's willing to uh, support your business and, and, and gain extra money or somebody who's uh, uh, willing to get some training to, to get some understanding such as uh, college students who want some tr uh, internship and in order to get into the field, they have to get some experience. So these kind of things that you could uh, implement to help you with the business. But uh, again, this is uh, more flexible than a line. It is uh, uh, <clears throat> designed the process based on the customer need. Uh, the only problem is capacity and hard to schedule. Uh, now, the third one is the intermittent operation. And these, are, these services are unique and seldom repeated. So it is just <clears throat> uh, you offer the service for only one of a kind. There is only one of a kind. Intermitt intermittent operations refers to service projects which are one off or only infrequently repeated. So if you do it once, you're not going to do it again. Here's an example to give you an idea on what this operations look like, what the service look like. Uh, example include the construction of a new service facilities, the design of advertising campaign, and the installation of a large computer or the making of a major film. So if you look into that, let's, let's take a look into the design of uh, advertising campaign. So if you wanna do a campaign for a company, make sure that this is a unique, you're not gonna make the same campaign for, uh, for other companies. This is, should be unique, this is, should be different. You wanna do it for one company and then whenever there's a new company coming to you, you're going to come up with a new ideas and new designs. So you're not, you're not gonna use the same ideas and same thing uh, for the same company. It's just only once, you offer your service only once and that's it. Uh, the large scale of such project, these are very uh, large project and large uh, services. So what you need to do is to use some um, management uh, tools. And uh, of course, planning is the key to success with these. Uh, and managers should uh, uh, evaluate each project independently. So whenever you have too many projects, you should uh, evaluate these projects independently in order to determine what process flow would contribute to the final result. Uh, me, uh, many project control and scheduling uh, techniques like criteria are used. So uh, what we need to do, again, these are complex projects and as a project managers, you need to uh, use some uh, project management uh, techniques, controlling and scheduling, such as uh, critical path analysis and many different other techniques in project management. But uh, that's the third type. And now we're moving into the second uh, 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 category or class that we use it to classify these services. And this is degree of contact, uh, human element of contact with the client influences the complexity and variability of the service process. Uh, it is important to know how often you're going to be in contact with the customers. Uh, are you going to contact the customer directly or indirectly? When there is a little customer contact, it is easier to adapt a liner approach. Um, however, high contact service uh, process will require greater flexibility. The more you have uh, contact with customers, you, the more flexibility you will have, and managers and operational staff can expect a degree of disruption. So this is important to see how often that you're going to contact. If there's a little uh, customer contact, then maybe the liner approach would be the easiest. The line job, the line uh, technique process would be best. An example on the uh, an example on the law. Uh, customer contact would be buying from Amazon. You don't talk to the you don't talk to the uh, to the people. You're just uh, you don't talk to the seller, and the seller doesn't talk to the customer. So all you do is just through the system you look and, and pick the uh, the item that you want, and you check out and you pay, and that's it. Uh, and that's a little customer contact. Another example on the little customer contact would be the 
uh, self-checkout at the grocery store. You go to um, multiple grocery store these days, they implemented uh, such as uh, Lokens in, in Bemidji or Walmart or Target. They have a self-checkout where there's basically nothing uh, to talk to uh, to the to the cashier about anything is you take your stuff and you you check yourself out and that's basically basically it. Uh, an example on the high contact service would be that would require uh, that would be uh, that would be maybe teaching. When we teach, we have to communicate with the students. We need to uh, um, advise them. There's so uh, there's a high contact uh, service there. Another another example would be investing in in a, in a bank. You need to talk to a financial advisor. You need to understand the process, and you could uh, have a multiple session to be uh, investing uh, on that on that service. There's so many uh, consulting as well. Once you talk to the consultant, you, uh, once the consultant talk to the customer, the customer has to meet with them, show them the the facility, talk about the details. And, and so on. So there is uh, the, the level of contact is important to classify your uh, business. All right, so this is kind of uh, what they call the taxonomy of service process. And this is based on uh, how the standardization process and how the level of contact. So if we're talking about the uh, uh, st standardized service, with no contact, with no customer contact, that would be a dry cleaning, uh, restocking a vending machine. These are example on a standardized process and there's no contact, no customer contact. If we're talking about uh, uh, processing of information or images, uh, that would be check processing, billing for a credit card. These are something with no customer contact and very high standardized. On the right side here, where you see the, let me see, let me use the pointer here. Right here on the right side, you will see the, uh, the customized services such as auto repair, uh, or if we're talking about processing of information, that would be computer programming, uh, designing a building. Indirect, let's take a look into the indirect customer contact with uh, with a standardization that would be ordering groceries from home, from the computer, phone-based account balance verification uh, on the high customized services that would be supervision of, uh, of a landing by an air uh, controller uh, bidding at the TV auction. So whether the bidding at the TV auction, this is indirect customer contact or the supervision of a landing uh, by an air uh, by an air controller. Uh, moving into the second part of this table, which is the direct customer contact. If we're talking no customer services uh, worker interaction, such as operating a vending machine, that would be standardized. And there is, right, there's a direct customer contact, uh, but there's no customer service worker needed for that. Uh, with the drawing cash from a, an automatic bank uh, teller, uh, ATM, you go, you withdraw things. Yes, there's some kind of uh, uh, customer contact, but however, there's no need for a customer worker, a customer service worker to help the customer. In terms of processing of people operating an elevator uh, or riding an escalator. So this also, there's a high uh, uh, customer contact, but there is no need to uh, for a customer service worker there. For the customized uh, service, that would be uh, sampling food at a buffet dinner. Yes, the customer could go and, and do the sampling by themselves. Uh, bagging of grocery, this is something that a, a customer uh, can do it. There's a high contact, but there's no need. Again, we're focusing on no need for a service worker. Again, the whole thing that I'm sharing with you here will help you to uh, find the details about your service and how you could implement the service. Do you need a, a no customer contact? If yes, then you could follow these. If you need indirect customer to contact, you probably want to use one of these examples here and apply it for your system. If you need, if there, if your business is uh, in need for a direct customer contact, you have to decide if it no customer service worker or you need a customer service worker to be interaction with the customer. So these are just an examples that will help you to 
to a better uh, strategic uh, plan for your business. All right, so for no, no customer service worker and high uh, customized uh, driving a rental car uh, using a health club facility. Uh, moving into the next category here, where is customer service worker interaction. There is a need such as food service uh, serving in a restaurant, car washing, you probably you need somebody to take care of the customer, uh, processing of information images, that would be an example of that, giving a lecture, uh, handling a uh, uh, routine bank transaction, uh, processing of people that would be providing public transportation <clears throat> or providing mass uh, vaccination. And now, now moving into the high customized service, an example would be with a customer service worker would be a home carpeting cleaning, landscaping services. Uh, it is customized and there's a need for uh, customer contact and there is a need for customer worker. Uh, <clears throat> processing, of, processing of information and images, portrait painting uh, and concealing. Processing of people, that would be uh, an example with uh, direct contact and a customer that would be example on that would be hair, hair cutting, performing uh, uh, surgic, uh, surgery. Uh, and um, that's basically all about the uh, taxonomy of the service. Again, these are just an example to uh, give you an idea how your business will look like. Do you need a customer contact? There's no customer contact. And if yes, do you need uh, to standardize it or you need to customize it? If standardizing, we said the line process would be the best. Uh, job shop would be the other side for customization or maybe the, uh, the events such as the consulting. If we're dealing with consulting, you probably wanna do one kind of a job and, and this will go into a different route and needs a different strategies. With that said, I'd like to thank you. And that's all for uh, this topic. And I'll see you in another uh, topic, in another video.